CCC family. It's Dawn Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet and today we're going to learn how to make these cute little keychains or you can use them as bookmarks. You can use them for whatever you wish but they're really quick, they're really easy and they use very little yarn so they'd be great for craft shows and anything like that. And please don't forget to hit the bell below for notifications and subscribe so you can get all my future videos. And please like and share. That would help so much. So let's go ahead and get into the materials. Okay, so for our materials today, you're going to need a 4.25 millimeter hook or a size G. Um, you can use any kind of yarn that you wish, but to make them exactly like uh, you see in the thumbnail or in the video, I'm using a worsted weight for yarn. Um, but you could go smaller or bigger, and then of course you would need a bigger or smaller hook as well. Just note that when I tried this, I felt like it worked better um, with a smaller hook and a little bit of a smaller yarn. While this is worsted weight four, it's still smaller than your average four because it is um, variegated, meaning that it changes colors quite a bit. And once it gets the dye of the colors on there, it seems to make the yarn a little bit easier to work with and a little bit smaller than your regular um, yarn. And also this yarn is Lion Brand yarn um, and I will put in the description exactly uh, what the colors are for all of these, okay? You will also need a pair of scissors and you will need a darning needle or you might call it a crochet needle. Um, doesn't matter what size, just any size that can work your yarn in well. Okay, so let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a slip knot Okay, and then we're gonna chain one, and then you're gonna pull tight on that chain. We want it to be really tight, so it doesn't even look like a chain really, you've just made it into a knot basically. Then you're going to chain two, one and two. Then you're going to be working in the second chain from the hook, and you're going to be making a puff stitch. So you're gonna yarn over, pull this loop on your hook out a little further, Yarn over, go into this, this second chain from the hook, pull up once, yarn over, pull up twice, yarn over, pull up three times, okay? Then you're gonna hold your, your yarn, your working yarn here with your thumb because you're gonna hold that out a little bit because we're gonna go through it. So then you're gonna yarn over, holding your thumb over this to hold it out, then you're gonna go through all loops and then you're gonna go back through this little piece of yarn that we were holding out with our thumb and you're gonna pull through and do a single crochet and that's how you hold that in place, okay? Then you're going to chain one and then we're gonna be working right on the top of this puff where we just did that single crochet. We're gonna be working into there. So pull up a little bit on your yarn and we're gonna make another puff. All the puffs that we do in this little ball is gonna be this same side, uh, same way that we did this one, okay? So you're gonna pull up, yarn over, go into this place, and again, do three times. One, two, and three. And then, without closing this, you're gonna make another puff over here. So don't go through anything yet. You're gonna yarn over, go into this first spot uh, chain that we worked into, where we did our first puff, and you're gonna yarn over and do another puff. One, two, and three. Now you've got two puffs on your hook. You're gonna hold your thumb in place to hold this out and you're gonna go through all of these loops. And then you're going to go through this little loop on the side here, pull up your yarn and do a single crochet to hold it all together, okay? So that's what it looks like so far. Then we're going to do that again. We're going to chain one. We're gonna do a puff right here at the top of the single crochet that we just worked. So then we're going to do a puff. One, two, and three. And then you're gonna go right over here again into the same first chain that we've been working into. So you're not gonna close off this puff, you're gonna go into the next one, yarn over, go into that place and pull up three times. One, two, and three. You've got two puffs on your hook. Holding your thumb on this yarn, you're gonna hold that out, 
pull through all of these, then go back into that place you were holding out with your thumb, pull through and work a single crochet, okay? Then you're going to chain one again. You're going to again do the same thing, but this time we're gonna put three puffs on our hook. So let me show you how to do that. Pull your yarn out, working in the same space on the top of these two puffs, we're gonna work another puff. One, two, and three. And then you're gonna yarn over, go into this next spot right here. One, two, and three. Right in that place we were working in before. That same chain space right there. And then we're gonna go all the way over here on the top of this puff, okay? So this is where it can get a little bit confusing because we see some loops right here that we can work through or some uh, uh, stitches we can work through over here. But you wanna go through right here, this one right here on the top, okay? So yarn over and go into this place, pull up and work a puff. One, two, and three. You've got three on your hook. You're gonna go through all three, holding your thumb on this place right here. Go through, pull up, and then chain. I mean, single crochet to close. And this is what it looks like so far. Looks like a little rose, by the way. <laughs> okay, so to make this easier on us, we're going to put, I don't use, you can use any stitch marker you want, but you need something that's going to fit around. You can't obviously use a piece of yarn. It has to be something that will hold this here that you can pick it up on. So I'm going to use these little hair bows that I use for everything. And I'm gonna put that right there, okay? But if you have some of those circular ones, those work good too. All right, so that's holding that in place. So I don't even have to hold it now with my thumb. And I've got all these four on my hook. So I'm just gonna yarn over, I'm gonna get that out of the way, yarn over and go through all of these. And by the way, you can do this with all of them if you want, if it makes it easier. And so that's right there. And so I can just put my hook right under there, take that out, pull through and do a single crochet. And this is what it looks like so far. Just showing you, put my finger there in the top. As you can see, it's getting really round, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a single crochet again. I mean, a chain one again, and we're gonna be working in the same place just like we did before, and we're gonna do four again. Now I wanna tell you something. In these patterns for these, there's all kinds of different ones, but a lot of times they'll do five around to close it up totally. Um, I can't get that on my hook. I don't know how they do it, if they're just using a smaller hook or a smaller yarn. If you wanna try that, you can. Um, but I did it with ending with four, and I'm gonna show you how I did it, and I think it turned out great. But if you're using a smaller hook and a smaller yarn and can fit it all on your hook, then you can do five but I'm gonna show you how to do the four method, okay? So I'm gonna pull up just like I've been doing, and I'm going through, doing my puff right here on the top of these that I just finished. So one, two, and three. And then I'm going to go into my next space right here. One, two, and three. And then I'm gonna go into this space right here. One, two, and three. And then I'm going to go into this space right here. One, and this can be kind of difficult, two, and three. And the reason why it's harder is because you're closing up your ball now. You know, you're decreasing in a sense. So I don't know how they do it, but they go around all the way over here and do a fifth one. Um, and that is in a lot of patterns to do it that way, but there's, there's just no way. Look at this. <laughs> so maybe with a smaller hook, a, um, maybe a Tunisian hook, you could do it. I don't know, but we're going to do the four. So we've got four of these puffs on our hook. We're going to use our stitch marker again. 
We're gonna place it right here at the end, just like I did before, kind of close there. And then working over that, I'm going to yarn over, pull through all my loops, and sometimes they can get stuck, just work them through. It's amazing, sometimes they go smooth like butter and other times they don't. Sometimes you have to undo them and start again because you want it to look good. Uh, okay, and so you can undo this, put your hook right under there to catch it. Sometimes you can take it out and still catch it. And then pull through and do a single crochet, okay? So now you're left with this little hole, as you can see, right in the top. So this is what it looks like all the way around. It looks a little oblong now because we did those last four, but once I put some stuffing in there, then we can, and then we're gonna close it up, okay? So right here, what you can do is put your finger in there to make the hole a little bit more noticeable. Pull out your long piece right here. Pull it out long so it doesn't come undone. Even longer than that, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stuff this with the same color yarn that I'm using, okay? You can use stuffing. I just don't happen to have any on handy. I'm actually on vacation um, so um, at the beach, and I just don't have any. So um, I'm gonna pull out as much yarn as I can to finish my little project, and then I'm gonna pull off some of the same yarn just in my hand, because this is very small, and I can use this to stuff my little project. Now you could never do this for big projects. Uh, it would be really hard to do, or just be really dense and stuff and heavy. But for something like this, you could do it. And so what I do is I just start stuffing it in, and then I'll use my hook to just work it in like this. Now the thing is, when you use yarn, it can come out of your holes, uh, your side holes of your work. So just, you know, you'll have to put those back in if they do, okay? So I'm gonna work this all in, and once I get it worked all in, I'll meet you back up and I'll show you how to finish this all. Okay, so I've worked that all in, and because we didn't do those five, we still need to close it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into this space right here, so right across from where my hook is, I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna pull up a loop, and then I'm gonna go into this next space right here, okay? And I'm gonna pull up a loop. And then I'm gonna go through all of those three loops on my hook, which is basically decreasing. So I'm just decreasing one more time, but I'm just doing it with the singles there, okay? So that's our finished little ball. And now we're going to chain up and do the little holder thing at the top, okay? So we're gonna chain up 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 20, okay? And then we're going to, okay, so what this is now is this looks like it's on the side of our work. So I wanna bring it over so where it's more in the center so I'm going to push this through the middle here, like this, okay? So let me pull this over the other way. So I'm gonna go through the center just like that, pull through, and then I'm gonna pull through my little place there and do a slip stitch. Okay? And that's going to put that right in the center of my ball, okay, which is where I want it to be. Then I'm going to cut off and I'm going to leave enough where I can sew it in pretty easily, okay? So I'm going to take my darning needle. I'm going to take this piece that I have left off and we're going to work it right into the middle of a ball, the ball, just like you would do, um, you know, amigurami or anything like that, okay? So let me go right back through and finish this off here. Okay, so I'm gonna go right through the middle of my ball. I'm just gonna pull tight. And that's gonna pull that right into place as well. So going in through the same spot, 
I'm gonna go back into the middle of the ball. And I'm just gonna keep doing this several times to make sure it never comes undone. Just like that, okay? Then I'm going to cut as close as I can so that it comes in. If for some reason it's still hanging out like that one, you can just use your, your darning needle at the end and push it back in. And so then we just have this piece at the bottom to work in. So I'm gonna put it on my darning needle. I'm gonna go right through the very middle, just like this. And you can come out wherever you like, wherever there's a hole go in and out of the same place. Because if you don't go in and out of the same place, then you're gonna be able to see those stitches. Okay, pull tight so it goes back in. I'm not pulling tight enough, so I'm gonna push that back. And there you have your little cute, perfect little ball, just like that. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to make the bottom portion of it. So I'm gonna show you how to make this right here, okay? So all you're gonna do is you're going to take your yarn and you're gonna pull it out. Let me get this out of the way. You're gonna pull it out about a foot and then you're gonna keep wrapping it like this. So there's once, twice, three times, four times, five, and six. So I'm gonna do that six times back and forth. Then I'm going to cut right here, I'm gonna cut it off. And then I'm gonna cut these uh, places where I went back and forth so that they're open now. And the same with this side. I'm gonna cut these where they're open. And then I'm going to fold this in half just like this. Okay, then I'm going to take a piece, a pretty large piece, I'd say about a foot again, because this is gonna go up inside the ball, okay? So then we're going to pull that through like this where it's even, and then we're going to tie a knot. Now I like to do this two times, once, and then again. Okay, just like that. And then you can hold that together. Now we're gonna do one more tie and we're gonna do it right here. Now, you can go around it several times like this. If you go around it several times to make it tighter, and it does look good though, you'll eventually have to cut off. And if you cut off, you're going to see these little ends here. I really don't like to do that. So I like it better when I can just tie it once, leave it the length of this so that you can't see it. So I'm gonna show you how to do it that way. Okay, so I'm gonna take a piece of this and I'm gonna make sure that it's about double the size of my tassel, okay? Because I want it to hang down so you cannot see that it's um, been knotted there, okay? So I'm gonna do this in half as well. I'm gonna bring it in right about, about an inch, half an inch down from where the start is. So right about here and I'm just going to pull super tight. And then they can just hang and flow with the rest of it. So you don't have to cut it off up here where it's noticeable, but it's still really tight and you can still see that it's a tassel, okay? So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna just leave that hanging and we'll cut it off in just a minute. We're gonna use these little pieces right here and we're going to put them on our darning needle We've got two and we're gonna work both of those into the ball. So I'm gonna turn my ball upside down and find the end. And I'm just gonna go through and work in this piece, which is gonna pull up that tassel into there. So I'm just gonna work it in several times. Just don't wanna make sure that this doesn't come undone. In and out, okay? And then you can cut. This is the one you really need to make sure you work it several times because if you pull really hard, you could pull it out of your ball, okay? 
So just make sure that you work this one in really good, okay? So again, in and out of your ball. And that's why I said make sure you have a lot left over there so that you can work it in so it doesn't come undone. And I'll show you an example of how that can happen in just a minute. So that if it happens to you, you'll understand why, okay? So I've worked that in. I'm gonna cut off. And that one didn't go in very well, so I'm gonna push it in. And if any of your holes, you see any kind of yarn or anything coming through, just use your darning needle to press it back in, okay? Just press it back in. All right, and so now we're pretty much finished. We just have to trim the ends. So what I like to do is I'll take one that I already have to kind of give me an idea of how long I want it. You can obviously keep it just as, as long as you want to, but I'm gonna keep these pretty even. So I'm going to cut right here to trim everything off. Just like that. And look at that, isn't it so cute? It's just cute as a button, I love them. I just think they look so cool, they're so easy to make. Um, you can make a ton of these. And like I said, they would work great with craft fairs and stuff like that, okay? So that one's still a little bit longer, I might trim it up. But yeah, they are great fun, really easy to make once you get going on them. Takes a minute, um, but once you get going, they look really good. But I did wanna show you this real quick. This is what happens if you pull on them and you did not leave enough yarn. See, I left very little yarn to work in. And so when that happened, it can pull right out of your bottom of your work. So make sure that these loops are a lot longer, okay? So I'm gonna have to try to fix this, and what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna add yarn to these by doing one of those really cool little um, invisible knots, and then I'm gonna try to work them through the best I can so I don't have to waste it, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do to fix that one, but just try to keep them long in the beginning. Now, one thing that did help me also with this pattern is the, the hardest thing to remember is where the puffs go when you're doing it, and how many puffs there are, okay? So what I did was I wrote that down. Once I realized how to do the puffs and where they kind of went, and if you need to, don't hesitate to rewind, pause. You can make the video slower, um, do all kinds of things. Um, you know, just keep watching it so that you can get the hang of it. But what I found was, I, this is what helped me. And if you wanna write this down, you can. I started off with one puff, then I did two puffs, then I did two puffs again, then I did three puffs, then I did two puffs, then I did three puffs, then I did four puffs, and then I did four puffs again. And then remember, I did the two single crochets together to close it off, okay? So I hope that helps. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, please, uh, if you need any help or you need anything, have any requests, wanna show me some pictures, you can find me in the description box. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Um, I have a Gmail, and you can also find me here on YouTube. So thanks so much, guys, for watching. Thanks for sharing and for liking and all those wonderful things, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy crocheting. Bye-bye.